when you're learning how to do programming and electronics and stuff like that, you always go online looking for <gasps> advice, right? You're always looking for, you know, do I have a chance? Should I get into this as a career? Should no. I just keep it as a hobby? You know, what's the easiest way to do X, Y, and Z? All that stuff, right? We've all been there. I stopped looking at those for advice because there's just all oh kinds of God. different routes you could take and nobody really knows you except for you. But recently I found some really hilarious advice and uh, some, some real gut checks for anybody that's trying to get into programming. It's from Cora. Is that how you say it? I don't know. So the question that was raised by somebody was, what do only people with 20 to 50 years of programming experience know? Some of these answers are brutal. So Tony Lee comes in, he says, it's not about the programming. It's not about the language. Software engineering is like housing construction. Programming is the ability to drive a nail into a piece of wood. Knowing the right language is like knowing which kind of hammer to use. Boom, that's great. The front end is the coat of paint that you put on it. None of it is going to yield a beautiful program or a gorgeous home. This guy, I like it already. I like this answer. You need a vision. It needs to be functional, but it also needs to be beautiful. It can't be wasteful. It needs to be tidy and neat. It needs to be easy to maintain and easy to build an extension. Yeah, scalability, right? You need a plan. You need skilled craftspeople who truly care about their product. Hard to come across. You need the right tools. You need the right architecture and you need the right manager to bring it all together. Only then does the magic happen. That's a fantastic um, approach and analogy, I think programming is so logical and don't kid yourself you're you're not a computer okay people call you know your brain's computers mm, we're an analog computer very different than a digital one and i that's why i think analog computers are better we're superior that is a fantastic answer tony and i think that can be applied to pretty much any hobby any industry any field of work so we have another answer by a roman andronov he has a brutal brutal answer um, he says the truth of the matter gained through the multiple decades of my practice at various companies is ugly not convenient and is not what you want to hear already i know this is going to be this is going to be brutal number one the technical job interviews are non-indicative and non-predictive waste of time that is to put it bluntly garbage a navy seal can be as brave as he or she wants to be during the training but only when the said seal meets the bad guys face to face on the front lines does his or her true metal can be revealed. This is true. This is just like what Mike Tyson says. He says, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. It's so true. Number two, an average project and an average company, both average the globe over, is staffed with mostly random, technically inadequate people who should not be doing what they are doing. I think that's true for most jobs, especially especially government. Number three, such random people have no proper training in mathematics and computer science. Very interesting. As a result, all the code generated by these folks out there is flimsy, low quality, hugely not efficient, non-scalable, non-maintainable, hardly readable steaming pile of spaghetti mess. That's what everybody says. Everybody with experience always says this. The absence of structure, order, discipline, and understanding in one's mind is reflected at the keyboard times 100%. Yeah, and I think there's a problem we're kind of running before we can walk. Look at NVIDIA's drivers. <clears throat> Number five, it is a major Hail Mary, a hallelujah, and a standing ovation to the genius of Alan Turing for being able to create a Turing machine on the one hand, can take this infinite abuse, and on the other hand, be nothing short of a miracle, still produce binaries that just work, or so they say. Here's something interesting. This is his uh, view on what a programmer, computer programmer, so to speak, uh, should be defined as. A person who combines all of the following skills and abilities. A, the ability to write a few lines of properly functioning C code. B, the ability to write a few hundred lines of properly functioning C code in the matter of a small number of hours. C, the ability to write a few thousand lines of properly functioning C code in the matter of a small number of weeks. This is interesting. I mean, he's, re he's just saying the same thing over people who really know their stuff and they know how to do it in C because it's a lower level language. You're going to know exactly what's going on. The ability to write a small number of tens of thousands of lines of properly functioning C code in the matter of several months. The ability to write several hundred thousand lines of properly functioning C code in the matter of a small number of years. Damn. 
F, the ability to translate a given set of requirements into source code that is partitioned into a large collection of small and sharp libraries and executables that work well together and can withstand a steady state nonstop usage for at least 50 years. Seven, it is the ability to sustain the above multi-year effort during which the intellectual cohesion of the output remains consistent and invariant is what separates the random amateurs of which there is a majority from the professionals of which there is minority. In the yeah. Number nine, a project staff with nothing but technically capable people can still fail. The team cohesion and psychological compatibility of team members is king. This is raw and unbridled physics. A team or a whole is more than the sum of its members or parts. That is so true. Um, you can't do everything by yourself. People have this, this um, delusion that they're going to become an Iron Man or that Iron Man is realistic. It's not. I mean, look at the cells in your body. Each cell makes up your body's organs, which makes up your body. And so then, then you, you have, have, you know, the actual cells are made of those smaller, smaller parts, parts, parts are parts broken down and you inward go in at each part. infinity looking made up of smaller it, parts. It's, it's all about getting those parts to communicate and, and work in a flow. It's all about that flow. And I think you can do that on a personal level too. Like you have your flow of your, your workflow basically, and you have to have a nice environment to do that. You need to clean up your desk and stuff like that. 10, all, pro all software project deadlines without exception are random and meaningless guesses that have no connection to reality. If that's happening in groups, it's definitely gonna happen with you. Intelligence does not scale. A million fools chained to a million keyboards will never amount to one proverbial Einstein. I think that's a valuable approach and I think if you read that a few times, you'll get the gist of what he's trying to say. So if you want to find the direct link to these answers on Quora, they're hilarious and they're recent and it, there's a ton of different uh, pools of experience in there. So I definitely suggest you go check it out, even if you're just programming little chips. You know, it just gives you a bigger picture view of the challenges that you're going to face and how to not let yourself be pulled in all these different directions by other people's opinions. If you enjoyed this, I plan on putting up another episode of this fairly soon. So definitely stay tuned and stay grounded.